Hi friends, this is Sarah from Crafting and Relaxing. Welcome, thank you so much for joining me. Today I have a process video for you with my Honey Bee Stamps paper pad. And this paper pad is bees. It's called the Bees Knees. I showed these cards in Smash That Small Paper Pad, but I wanted to show you how I made them too, because I've shared some process videos, especially around the holidays where I'm making a whole bunch of cards. These cards, honestly, I was tired. It was right after I hadn't been feeling well, and I did them on a Monday evening, a Tuesday evening, and a Wednesday evening, and the video had to come out early Thursday morning. So I was on a timeline, and I just wanted to show you how I create sometimes after work during the week. The first night, I think I made three cards, and just to show you that it doesn't have to be a lot. And if you fold your paper first, you won't spill it on the counter, the embossing powder. That was an oops on my part. So I had fabric with adhesive on the back of it. It had been run through a Xyron sticker maker and it had these bees and I just really wanted to use it. It made sense to use it for these cards. And for these cards, I wanted some variety. I was really pushing myself to use some things that had been sitting around and dig into the bee stuff. The minute I glued that down, I realized I was gonna layer it on black. I was gonna give it another mat. That's okay, didn't work out. Then I thought about having a trail for that big bee and I just wasn't feeling it. And I used a lot of glue on that because it's fabric. So it'll drink it right up. So I have that black embossing with Be Happy. Then we're moving on to our next card. This one I had been sitting in front of the TV fiddling with that Brad, which I left as a Brad for this one. I don't know why I didn't take the back off. And piece of ribbon and fabric. Sorry, not fabric, the string. I don't have a lot of yellow in my room. So I had gone around and made a kit like I do. I'll take a box and throw in, oh, here's some black and white stuff. Oh, here's some yellow twine that's been sitting around. Or I think in this case, it was a piece of embroidery floss. I'm not really sure where it came from, but it was just sitting around. So I was just trying to use some of these things up. And I think sometimes we get in the habit of using what we have that's new and we don't dig through our room and say, hey, what about that black and white ribbon that I've had and is adorable and would be great on B cards? So I just got it in my brain that I was going to make an embellishment with these items. No rhyme, reason, nothing about it. Then I flipped through the papers. The papers have some orangey tones to them and then some of my yellow embellishments aren't really yellow and I'm just weird about my papers matching and stuff matching. When it comes to blue I'll put any blues together but I didn't want my yellows my bright yellows to be with my yellowy green yellows. I, I don't know maybe you're not like that. So then I had this strip and I have one bee dye and I was experimenting and then I have the bee stamp and I was just trying to figure out how the layout would go. One thing I've talked about before is sometimes when you watch a card maker on YouTube, you are really impressed because even if they didn't edit it, it just all comes together so nicely and they know that X and Y will fit together and, and this stamp goes with that die. It's because they've used it together before, right? And that's what I've talked to you about. You get to know how a die looks on the front of a card. Well, I've never used these items together before. I don't know if I've actually made B cards. I did make two different B themed books. I made a mini album and then I made a journal for Katie, but I don't really typically make B cards. So it's kind of a stretch, but I did find some B stuff in my stash. And I think one time I borrowed Noni's B die and made something, but I think that was for the books. I love that beehive paper. I mean, technically it's yellow hexagons, but to me it's beehive. Then I started looking at my stamps and I got out some spring stamps and I just didn't want like two rectangles. I don't know, something about it. I was trying to have creative cards and try something else. So I got out my circle punch and then I tried to stick it back in there, which sometimes works, but 
essentially what I was doing was checking the size. So I used that negative, the punch out, to compare my stamp to it and make sure I would like it. And I have a stamp platform, the Tim Holtz one. I use stamping blocks a lot. By the time I get that thing out and clear a space for it, and then many times I'm kind of underwhelmed by it, I, I'm just happy with a stamping block. What's the worst that can happen? I can restamp that. I have plenty of white scratch paper, trust me. Then I was trying to think about flowers. Bees, flowers, what could I do with this theme? So I made myself a little flower and I thought the white was a little flat. Then as far as embellishments went, when I put that box together, I had found these yellow flowers, which quite honestly, I'm guessing Noni got in some bundle purchase and none of us have used for probably two summers now. So it's, it's probably time to use them. Then I grabbed my archival yellow pad. I don't have all the colors of ink, probably except in archivals because I got a couple sets of those for my birthday. So I just use those. You could use any ink that you have. I just wanted some yellow around the edge. Because I left that as a brad and wrapped string around, I decided it was gonna be kind of a pain to roll across the back of. So that's why I used the double-sided tape on it instead of trying to roll across it with my gun. Then I thought this through, which I don't always do, put the flat parts of your card together first. So if you're gonna use a big chunky layered embellishment, put all the really flat easy parts together and then add the chunky ones because it's a lot harder to burnish your card front down onto the base when you have, you know, strings and ribbons and a random bee brad here and there. You just never know what I'm gonna add. Oh, and then some more flowers. So I put that together, then I was about to put it on the card. I'll show you that in a minute, and I caught myself. I don't know why I covered like every square inch of this with foam tape. That might have been a little excessive. Could have gone around the outside, put a little X in the middle, whatever. So I started to peel it off and then realized, wait, I need to put my flowers on the front first because it's going to be sticky and I'm going to be denting it up and messing with it. So I wanted to get those flowers down. And I sped that way up. All I did was grab the little prongs on those brads and fiddle with them until they fell off. You can get pliers, or if you don't care too much about your fingernails, you can just do it by hand. By the time I go find the pliers. Then what I'm doing is I'm taking like my thumbnail and rolling the glue dots off. I can't remember if I used two or three on these little tiny ones. Just globbing them up and putting them in the back and then sticking it down. You'll know you have enough glue dots back there if when you put it down, it sticks. You'll also likely get some cat hair or dog hair if you're at my house, so you'll have to fix that. If it doesn't, if it's not grabbing when you push it down, you don't have enough glue dot in the back of that. There's no science, sometimes two, sometimes three. You can, when I have bigger embellishments, I use bigger glue dots just to save time, but you could use a million small ones. And there we go. I just wanted something different. I didn't want like two rectangles. I didn't want it super square. I do not think that I have made a card with that layout. Like if you look through my videos, that's not a common layout for me, but I really liked it. And I didn't want to cover up a lot of that yellow paper. Here we are, we are getting out some sentiments that I keep thinking, hey, I need to use those and I forget about them. Noni stamped these out for me months ago and I sorted them in a box of sentiments. And what I should have done was put them in my little book with my die cuts. One of the decluttering things that I did said, put things where you will look for them. It doesn't matter if you will look for your, if, if you think you should keep your iron in your laundry room, if you will look for it in your front coat closet, that's where you should keep it. Well, I have these in this box and I never look there. So finally I was like, I'm gonna get those out. And I thought since they were cute little black and white sentiments, they would be great for B cards. And I was trying to mix it up because I didn't have a lot of uh, stamp sets to go with it. Just kinda getting it and figuring it out. And one of them said, welcome little one. And I happened to have these stickers. They were in my room and as I, gathered stuff up what I'll do is if I know that 
you picked a paper pad in a video, I'll start making a bin of, oh, this would go well with that paper pad or Valentine's, Christmas, whatever it is. And there I'm just checking the size. Will that look good in that punch size? And so when I found those B stickers, I thought, well, of course, and threw them in the bin. Now I'm going through the papers. This is an idea. So I'm looking at what paper I want to put the B on. When I go to punch it, I know the B is going to cover up the center. So I tried to make it so the flowers were actually at the edges and they would show. If I had punched with a B in the center, it would have just looked like black and white dotted paper. You wouldn't have really gotten flowers. Here, I'm about to go crazy. I am tying a bow, people. And if you watch my videos, I don't like to tie bows. I would happily just purchase them with the adhesive on the back already. But I just thought this precious welcome little one card with this B sticker that kind of looks like a baby, it needed a bow. And the ribbon is a like a yellow and white checked ribbon. It is precious. I don't know where it came from either, but as I went through and put stuff together, then I thought that it needed a little bit, it needed something some solid. I don't have a bigger scallop punch and I don't have nesting dies of scallops and I was trying to stick with the flower thing. So I used the same punch but just rotated it a tiny bit so that the black peeks out behind it. I think on a baby card you don't want too much black anyway but I just wanted something to help that embellishment pop out a little. And then I put the welcome little one on the black card stock to make it pop. I am not good at cutting, what do you call them? Do you call them flags or fishtails? Which one do you call them? Either way, I'm not good at cutting them. So I will very often, my friend Noni, when she made these, she used her dies and cut them all out for me. I still sometimes will take something that's cut that way and just put it on a straight piece of paper. Because if I put it on a black piece of paper and try and cut it that way, I'm gonna mess it up. The only way I could do it is line it up and like trace it and trim it out and then glue it on mm, that exceeds my interest in the project here i was going to use that punch to cut some paper out of there that punch doesn't go in very far so be really careful if you're trying to conserve paper and save stuff and punch shapes out of it look for a punch that goes in further i was pretty sure i was going to have a super narrow margin but i just didn't want to mess it up then I decided to cut the front layer down a little because I was going to go with those dots and I wanted more of it to show. Sometimes I'll change the front layer of my card because I decide that I love the back paper layer showing a little more. No rules whatsoever. I added a tiny bit more glue to the B just to be sure. It was probably just obsessive. It seemed really nice and sticky, but... It's kind of three-dimensional, so I didn't want to mess that up. It has vellum wings. It's pretty cute. I may have bent its head a little bit. Then I couldn't figure out where the bow was supposed to go, and I went back and forth, but the bow had to be on there. I was just sure. This is a baby card. It needs a bow. It's super cute. I don't even know anybody that's having a baby, but I would totally send them this card. <laughs> then maybe I do. I'll think about it. Then I'm getting it all laid down. It's a little bit... Uh, what would you call it? Warped? Because I have a couple layers of glue, that embellishment is weird, and I've punched out the back. So I'm going to fill that hole in. I don't usually do that, but I have two layers of wet glue, and I just wanted to be sure that it laid down flat. So when I flip it over, I'm going to punch just basic white cardstock sitting off to the side, and then just glue it in that hole flatten it out. You don't have to do that, but that one was a bad setup because I pretty much punched the hole right where I tried to glue all that stuff on top of it. And then I just put a whole ton of adhesive to make it lay nice. I think it turned out pretty cute. I don't make a lot of baby cards, but that one is just darling. Probably because Noni Cinnamon is so cute. It's good to have a friend that loves to make embellishments. You should definitely get one. <laughs> so there it is with the bee and you can see the vellum wings. And I just thought that one turned out fun. 
But more than anything, what I wanted you to see in this video is I didn't take the time to clear the counter, right? It's not a Saturday. I don't have hours. Here we are now it's Tuesday night and you're going to see after I made those three cards, I ate some dinner and then I sat on the couch with Mr. Crafting and relaxing and I used my scraps. So what I'll do is I'll grab the stuff out of my craft room and then I'll head for the couch. And I took my scraps of yellow paper and my bee dye and my little sidekick. You guys know I love that. <laughs> okay. It's scalloped paper. I tried to enhance it with the scalloped punch. I didn't like how it turned out because the layers, the scallops didn't hit quite right and the edges were white. Then I punched it and tried to do it different. It came out exactly the same, but then I had to keep going because I'd already started the row. In the end, it's fine. It just wasn't exactly how I envisioned it. So anyway, Monday night, I sat on the couch and I die cut bees and glued the layers. Some of them are really layered up. You'll see that I actually did like an inlay with the different colors. Some of the other ones are just, I cut a yellow one, glued it onto black paper and trimmed around it with scissors. And I just think that's a nice way when you want to work with some paper or some cards, you can get some embellishments made and it kind of helps your inspiration, gets you going instead of just sitting down looking at six by six pieces of paper and thinking, okay, now what? So I didn't have a plan. I didn't, when I was watching TV, I didn't think, oh, I need two orangey bees and three black ones and one bright yellow one. I just had scraps of paper that I had taken out of my, I sort them by color. So I have a little photo size box that has scraps in it. I grabbed everything that was yellowy in there and took it and then took some black scraps and made bees. And here, I'm trying to figure out the specialty paper box is really full. Okay, specialty paper is on sale, on special in my house. My mom used to tell us that when fruit and stuff was getting sketchy. It's on special. I didn't love the gold. I don't know. Do you guys put gold with yellow and black and white? And I don't love my gold paper. It's not, uh, it's like a harvest gold or something. I don't know. Anyway, so I ended up with the shimmer paper and it doesn't show really well on camera, but it's like a silvery shimmer paper. So just enough to add some interest and not have it be another black layer. I think I like it. I figured if I didn't like it, I could make the same card again with black and I'd be fine, but at least I would have tried something different. In these cards, I was really set on trying different things. Then I thought the sentiment on the black, it was just too much for me with those vertical stripes. I didn't like it. And so I switched that one to shimmer. And again, I didn't cut those flag ends. You know, you can coach me on that all you want, but I'm just not getting better at it. I have had trouble gluing glitter paper. And so I was a little apprehensive in putting this card together. I've never fought with shimmer paper, but I just put it in that specialty category and I was a little distrusting of it. So you'll see that in addition to using my ATG gun, I also put some wet adhesive on here. I just grabbed my Barely Arts glue because my when I used glitter as a layer in cards, they were beautiful the night I made them and they were a nightmare the next weekend. So I just thought, well, I'll try it. But honestly, I have not had bad luck at all with shimmer paper. It hasn't been bad to me. I just, I, I think I'm scarred from the glitter paper. Okay, then I decided I didn't want the same paper showing, so I flipped it over. Now, here's the problem with making embellishments when you watch TV. It, the lighting isn't as good. So what I realized was I hadn't trimmed very well in there and I just wanted to touch that up. You'll notice this B is actually inlaid. Like I cut it in black, then I cut it in yellow and I glued the two layers on top of a black B. I only did one like that, okay? It, it took a while. And I almost lost one of the pieces in the couch and then it was like the very last bit. So I would have had to cut a whole nother set. And I didn't glue the wings down on the bees. I kind of wanted them to flutter a little. And then I was thinking this should hang off the side. I don't know, just in my mind. I, I, I got that in my brain. And I'm sorry, I'm going to get out of, I keep going out of frame. So what I did was I cut a tiny bit of shimmer paper. You can see it on the counter. 
but it was too thick. It was much thicker than the actual honeybee colored cards or paper. So then I cut a tiny scrap of that paper so it would be the same thickness as the black and white, put some wet glue, and then we're gonna glue it down. Add it a little more. You'll see me, I lay things out a lot and experiment or I'll lay my die on the card before I even have a die cut. It's because, I don't know if that's straight. It's because I am trying to see how I will like it. I'm not very good at visualizing things in advance. So if I can lay the layers together, I'll do that. When I was using that B sticker, I cut the whole sticker off of the sheet and laid the plastic with the sticker on the card instead of pulling the sticker off and setting it down to be sure that I wanted it. Oh my gosh, I had the hardest time with this clear dot. I thought it was on, then I held up the card, then yeah. Eventually, I'm, it's gonna get worked out. <laughs> These are Hero Hues, they're clear. I bought the clear ones because they just add some interest and they go with everything. And the reality of it is, had I found yellow ones and been and known what I was gonna make, well, we both know I would have bought blue, but they probably wouldn't have been quite the right yellow for me. So there, in the end, I got it fixed and I got one on there. And I just thought those were fun. I probably have yellow enamel dots somewhere, but I hadn't gotten those out. They weren't in my kit. Then we're just gonna take a minute and tidy. The other thing about this is I want you to see that I'm, I'm messy. Here I'm laying out a birthday card. It's kind of a sassy one. It's your birthday, another year closer to Velcro shoes. I just couldn't rock that sass with the bee. I don't know, somehow it just, the bee was like so sweet and charming. And in the end, I didn't make this card. I'm not saying I won't, but I haven't yet. I may have just gotten sidetracked by something shiny. I did. So what we're doing is we're gathering up all the stuff. We're gonna go watch TV. This is the end of Tuesday night in the craft room. Now it's Wednesday night and you can see what I made while I was watching TV, okay? I have a hexagon that I had never used in a set I got from Tuesday morning, which occurred to me. It wasn't in my kit, it was still on the wall and I went, oh, I have that. The reason I got out the hexagon or even thought of it was I was getting tired of the circles with the bees. So that's a super cute, may all your wishes come true. It seemed a little long especially by the time I matted it with something. I could turn the card the other way for that one maybe. So I'm just experimenting, playing with the sentiments, trying to figure out which one I want. Ooh, the orangey bee did not work on there for me. So then I realized I have these bee brads. I think um, my friend Noni got them somewhere and I don't know, there were like five of them in my room. So I'm pulling the backs off, fiddling with that and then trying to figure out what else I wanna put with them. If you leave the backs on, it's just more lumpy. So that's why I do the glue dot thing, be happy. I decided to put it on the inside because I couldn't find a place on the front that I really liked it. I would have had to you know, stamp it on something white and I just kinda of liked this card the way it was. If you're not sure what I did, I took scissors and sat down and I fussy cut around those hexagons. So I cut kind of small rectangles of them, thought about, okay, maybe a three by five or three by four. And then I picked a section and I cut. So I have the scrap from the middle that I can do something with later. And then I have bits of beehive on each end and I've laid them over the floral paper with the bees on it. And that's just a fun way to enhance the fun shapes on the page. It makes the hexagon stand out more instead of taking paper with cute beehive shapes and cutting it in rectangles. But it isn't very fun. You have to be watching TV or sitting around for a while or you might not like my idea. Also, I'm that's not my idea, clearly. I didn't make that up. Okay, then I decided to go through, this is my iris case that I keep down in the cupboard. And if you've seen my craft room tour, you know about my cupboard down there with my iris cases up on end. And it is solid cardstock. And I long ago was a scrapbooker, so there's some 12 by 12 in here. These are scraps that are too big to go in my photo box. My photo boxes that are sorted by color. You know, they're like four by six. So these are scraps that I don't really plan on die cutting with. I'll probably use them as strips on paper, card layers, whatever. And... 
in sol in solid cardstock, I mix my scraps and my solids at this point because I've managed it down to one bin. In pattern, it's not like that. Now, I'm not saying I have one bin of solid. I'm saying I have one mixed bin and then many other packages. Now, what I'm doing here is I like the dotted paper that I've picked for the back layer. I want more of it to show, but I want to be careful. I don't cut any bees off the front layer. So I'm looking at it and saying, okay, no bees are near the edge on the bottom. So let's trim some more off the bottom. Then, oh, there's no bees on this side. So let's trim this side. The other side has that half a bee showing and I want to keep that. So I was just trying to make sure I didn't take one single bit of yellow off. I like how that one turned out. That is a really fun color for that layer. And that's just digging through my scraps. It's not like I went out and bought anything, just looked around. I don't know why I got obsessed with the wet glue in this video along with the ATG. I think it might've been because that had that's that basil cardstock that has the dots on it. Maybe I was worried it wouldn't stick. I was just having a great time with the wet glue, wasn't I? It's not very common for me these days to make a card without a sentiment on the front and to stamp one on the inside. So that was kind of fun. Sorry, this is what happens when I make process videos. I put it all together. I went to push that center down with the wet glue and realized the camera wasn't on for some reason. So that's how that one went together. Then I'm just gonna glue it onto the card base. Well, with my ATG. And I keep a stash of card bases sitting off to the side that I've already folded and stamped the back. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Bye-bye.